Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is my review for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6, The Reunion Part 2, okay? And before I get into it, let me just say that everything said in this video is alleged and it's my very own personal opinion. So, it opened up with Kiki admitting that her and her husband, you know, have been cheating on one another the entire marriage, like Tisha has said. So, it sounds like her and I mean is in an open marriage, okay? That's supposed to be closed, but it ain't. But what Kiki didn't admit to was paying for his big ass to take another bitch out on a date. It happened, but not how Tisha made folks think it did, okay? And just for the record, I have no respect for Amin, okay? Because any man who can tell his wife to take a shower because her feet stink, knowing she's on live in front of people is trash, in my opinion. Kiki said that it was from wearing her Ugg boots without socks, but he didn't have to do that shit. Truth be told, his ass probably smelled worse than her feet did. But anyway, y'all, Kiki said that the shit happened 18 years ago where Amin had asked her for some money. And then she had went out later on that day and saw that his ass out, you know, his ass was out on a date. Okay. That was a red flag right there. For one, should no man be asking you for no money. And for two, he damn sure shouldn't be asking for money to take another bitch out on a date. That's a different type of trifling, but I'm going to move on, okay? But anyway, Tisha stood on what she said about never telling Kiki that Marceau cheated on her. Then she pulled out some papers, I guess a transcript of a conversation that she and Kiki had one day, I guess to prove that Kiki was a liar. So the guy that allegedly had information on Marceau's infidelity had a conversation with Kiki. Tisha said that she heard that conversation and heard Kiki tell him to please tell her what he had on Marceau. The guy told Kiki that he wanted everybody on the phone or, or whatever, okay? Tisha says that Kiki never once said, let me go and get my cousin on the phone. So Tisha said, you know, that she called Kiki later on and asked her about that conversation. But Kiki told her that it never happened. She never had a conversation with that guy. So Tisha said that she lied about it. Then she said, well, she said, Kiki told her, well, I wanted to talk to you about it, but I wanted to do a face-to-face. -face. So Kiki you know, Tisha deemed Kiki to be a liar, okay? She was done with her. And she said that that had happened a couple of days before the barbecue at Kimmy's house, which is why she wasn't talking to Kiki at the barbecue. So Tisha accused Kiki of using her and Marcel as her storyline and told Kiki to talk about her own shit because she got a lot to talk about. So then Carlos messy ass gonna ask Mel and Kimmy if they felt like Tisha was in denial about what was being told to her by Kiki, okay? Because we already know that Mel feel like she's in denial, okay? So y'all, that shit was funny because Carlos messy ass gonna start playing that damn crazy ass music in the background. And Mel and Kimmy had started bouncing back and forth telling one another to go because neither one of them wanted to answer that question, okay? Mel was like, go Kimmy. And Kimmy was like, no, you go ahead, Mel. Mel was like, no, I got to take a shit. Kimmy was like, no, I got to go feed the baby. I said, what baby, bitch? Jalen is grown. Stop playing around and answer the damn question. <laughs> now, I, <laughs> now, I added some extras in there, but y'all get the picture, okay? <laughs> Kimmy went ahead and answered the question, saying that she didn't think that Tisha was in denial. She was just over it because at that point, the rumor had been going around for five years. So if somebody think that Marcel is cheating, bring the pictures, bring the girls, bring something that is solid. Kimmy said, you know, it's been so long. Nobody has been able to produce any real receipts pretty much. So it's pretty much a firm or whatever. Now, it took Mel a minute to answer. OK, <laughs> and you can tell that she wanted to say something else. But I feel like she took tisha's feelings into consideration and just said that you know from experience when it comes to you choosing to walk away from a marriage especially if you have kids together and you've been together for a long time you want something concrete so she feels that tisha just wants something concrete as in concrete proof okay so next y'all carlos wanted to know what you know why kiki was calling tisha dumb and i hate when she does that because it sounds so damn nasty when she called Tisha dumb. And just because Tisha don't respond in a way that you want her to respond, that don't make her dumb, okay? And you, it's like you being a professor or a former professor don't give you the right to call anybody dumb. Now, granted, some folks are dumb and sometimes they just need to hear that shit. <laughs> but I guess it just sounds so damn nasty because they're family, okay? And the way... <laughs> 
<laughs> and the way Monso is, I wouldn't be surprised if his ass is calling her that behind closed doors already, you know, which could fuck up her self esteem. I mean, it's already low <laughs> in my opinion, okay? Being around a dude like Monso. So I just feel like, you know, Kiki shouldn't be calling her cousin dumb like that. But that's just me, okay? But <laughs> who am I to say that? Because I, <laughs> I done caused some of my relatives worse, okay? So <laughs> let me just move on, child. <laughs> one thing, <laughs> but one thing I can't call my relatives is dumb, okay? They're not dumb. But anyway, Kiki said that she called Tisha dumb because Tisha has never seen her before try to make things up about her and Marceau's marriage. So why would she all of a sudden do it now? Marceau told her to be relevant on TV. <clears throat> Kiki said, no, because I'm relevant without it. In no way, okay? Do I agree with Kiki coming on TV telling her cousin's business? But I feel like she doing that shit because of Marceau. I'm not saying that is right, but I think Marceau knows that Kiki knows some shit about him and want to do whatever he can to discredit Kiki and try to move her on out of Tisha's life so she won't ruin his setup at home, okay? So Carlos then started talking about Kiki's sobriety, and I don't like the way that he was grilling her. And I don't like how he used that Crime Stoppers video when Kiki hadn't even been convicted of anything. But there you have a whole ass criminal on set with a whole ass fucking felony. And you never once brought that shit up on the show in the six seasons that has been on. Just because you have your criminal record sealed or expunged or whatever you call it, that don't mean that it wipes away the crime that your ass committed. You know what I'm saying? You're still a criminal. And I believe that's why we haven't heard anything else about Maurice suing Black Titanic, okay? Because he knows his ass can't, you know what I'm saying, prove that he ain't a fucking criminal. And that's in my opinion, okay? So they started showing the Crime Stoppers video and the cast members' responses once they learned about it. What they should have showed, okay? was Stormy laying her fat ass in that bed with her bitch ass husband saying that Kiki looked like Darkwing Duck in that video footage, okay? So Kiki could see that Stormy ain't her real friend, okay? That's what they need to show while Stormy was going around pretending to be like she's Kiki, pretending to be Kiki's friend, okay? She's not Kiki's friend. Stormy just needed somebody to film with this season, okay? Because she needed that check. But anyway... They show when Kiki took that drug test, that meal brought by, and, you know, the footage of her throwing that drink on Tisha. Now, when it comes to that drug test, no, I don't think that Kiki used somebody else's pee because whose pee was she going to use? Mel randomly popped up on her while she was at the storage place. Her husband was outside while she went in to take the test. Mel ain't gave her none of her pee. Okay, you know what I'm saying? However, she says that she takes methadone every day, I believe. With that being said, if she had taken methadone that day, why did it come back negative? You know what I'm saying? Unless the test is faulty. Or she thought she took the method on that day and didn't. I don't know. Okay. But that was a little questionable. But anyway, Kiki said that she was clean at the barbecue and that she was just triggered by Tisha ignoring her because she don't like to be ignored. And she said that Tisha knows that. But Tisha and Marcel was saying that Kiki is still on drugs. Marcel said, you know, he would bet $100 that she was. But I was like, Marcel. Chill out. Because where your broke ass going to get the $100 from? Stormy broke ass and already said she wasn't giving it to you. Tisha then brought up how Kiki told her that Kiki told... What did she say? Kiki told her that last year she was in a drug dealer's car and was stealing. And how he had a whole lot of money in his car or whatever. And she would take it and pay him. She would take it and pay for the drugs with his own money. Something like that. Now, that's some dangerous shit. You know what I'm saying? You stealing from a drug dealer? You know what I'm saying? Taking his money to pay for the drugs that he giving you? You don't play with drug dealers' money. They'll take you out before the drugs will. And Kiki didn't deny it. She just said that it happened more than five years ago. Okay? Not recently, like she was saying that Marceau didn't try to make a scene. Carlos asked the others if they felt that Kiki was on drugs at the barbecue. Mel said no. 
And Maurice Meatball here that said that he felt that Kiki was looking for her moment and sacrificed her cousin for her moment. I don't think she was on drugs. I just thought that, you know, it pissed her off the way that Tisha was ignoring her and siding with her husband over her, okay? Kimmy said when it first happened, she didn't think that Kiki was using, okay? But in hindsight, she said that she was thinking about how Kiki was sweaty and jittery when she came around the corner or whatever. Um... I don't know if she's using it or not. Maybe those are the side effects of the methadone or menopause. I don't know. I remember her telling Stormy when she had went to Stormy's house that day that methadone made her sweat. So I don't know. So Carlos, you know, he brought up how she took the drug test that Mel brought her, but it came back negative for the methadone that she said that she had taken. So like everybody else, you know, he was wondering why that was. He was also trying to be messy. So Monzo said that the test was lying and said that, no, what? She, yeah, he said that the test was lying or something like that, you know, and maybe it was somebody else's pee. And Maurice, his wide back ass going to shake his big ass head in the greens, okay? I was like, the only person I feel is on something, y'all, is a crazy ass brother, Mark. So while Marceau was wanting Kiki to take a blood test right there, you know what I'm saying? Something Kiki offered to do. They needed to be pulling up to Mark's house, asking him to take a test. And that's if he can pull himself away from the computer long enough from stalking mail and take it. And if Kiki would have taken a test right there, Marceau better have joined her in taking a test. Not a drug test, but a lie detector test, okay? Because just like he felt like, you know, Kiki was on drugs, people feel like he's on cheatation. So while she taking a drug test, he can take a lie detector test, okay? So Carlos got to grilling Kiki about her sobriety in a way that he, you know, should have been grilling Martel about that revenge P charge. Because it's not like Carlos and the rest didn't know what was going on. And he should have been grilling Marceau about that damn wifeless trip to Africa. Okay. So he asked Kiki if she was on drugs right then at the reunion. And she said no. She said she wasn't on drugs at the barbecue either. He asked her when was the last time she had taken any kind of hard drugs. Kiki said she has never taken any hard drugs. The only thing that she's ever taken was something that probably all of them had taken before, which was Percocets, okay? And he asked her when was the last time she had taken that, and she said that it had been years since she had taken it, okay? She said that she was sober then and been sober throughout the season. The only thing she's on is methadone, which to my knowledge is something used to treat addiction, okay? I think that's what uh, Kiki said, okay? So Carlos asked Tisha and Marceau why did they feel like Kiki was on drugs. Marceau said that it was because they have known her for 18 years. I said, correction, Tisha has known her longer than you have. That's her cousin. And why do you have so much to say about her cousin? Oh, because she know your secret? So you trying to convince Carlos that she's on drugs, something that your ass haven't been able to prove. But you trying to convince Carlos of that so he will kick her off the show and she won't be able to air your ass out on national TV for the cheating ass bastard that you allegedly are. Marso claimed that he has picked Kiki up off the side of the road high many times, okay? Of course, Kiki said that he was lying. She claims that her husband had taken her keys from her and she had called Marceau to pick her up. Marceau claims that there have been multiple times when he has gotten phone calls to come and pick her up after all of her family refused to do it. So he trying to say it happened because she was high. She's saying that it happened because her husband took the keys from her. So I don't know. Okay. I feel like it's possible that that may have happened, that um, Marceau may have had to pick her up, pick her up before. You know what I'm saying? Because... I don't know. Why are you calling him? Out of all the people you can call, why are you calling him? So it sounds like that it, what Marcel was saying could have been true. He, you know, but Marcel may have been exaggerating some, okay? So Carlos asked Tisha, since that was, you know, her blood cousin, um, was seeing her on Crime Stoppers enough confirmation for her that Kiki was still doing drugs. And I was waiting for Tisha to say yes. So I could say now, why was seeing Kiki on Crime Stoppers enough confirmation to prove that she was still on drugs? 
but that wide ass back in that hotel bed that resembled Marceau's wasn't enough confirmation to prove to you that your husband was cheating. Patricia said that when she saw that Crime Stoppers video, she asked Kiki, what was she doing and was she still on drugs? Kiki said, no, I'm, I'm done. I, done, I stopped. Tisha said, she asked her, well, why are you still in a lock? Kiki said, yes, why would I steal a lock? Okay, I say the same thing. Now, I know some detectives going to try to say, <laughs> I know some detectives, YouTube detectives, okay? Not that, <laughs> wait, let me get my words out. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I know that some YouTube detectives, okay, are going to try to say that Kiki <laughs> stole that lock to put it on her storage unit. <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> Y'all don't know that. Because <laughs> we did see her at a storage facility. <laughs> but we don't know that she did that, okay? But... Marceau had an interesting take on what, you know, on why she would steal the lock, okay? So, Marceau said, <laughs> oh my goodness, Marceau said, you would steal so you could take it back to get the money to buy drugs. He said, we're not going to play these games. Kiki said, now, how would I be able to get the money without a receipt? Marcel said, get a gift card and then sell the gift card for money. Kiki said, now, see, he knows, not me. I said, you damn right. You damn right he knows, Kiki, because you can't tell me that he wasn't sitting his wide back ass on that stage, okay? <clears throat> and wasn't speaking from experience. If anything, he told on himself, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the YouTube detectives <laughs> did some digging. And <laughs> oh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the YouTube detectives did some digging and said that Tisha used to shoplift many, many years ago. <laughs> And was with Marceau at that time that she allegedly did that. If so, maybe that's some shit that he done did, okay? In my opinion. Had Tisha shoplift and then took the shit back for gift cards. And he take the gift card from Tisha and sell them, okay? I'm just saying, in my opinion, that could have happened while he accusing other people of shit that he ain't got no proof of, okay? So, Carlos then told her that he saw the Crime Stoppers video and that the lady in the photo looked just like her. Kiki said she never denied that it was her. She denied the story that was attached to it. In other words, she was saying that she ain't steal shit, okay? And that the story was going to come out and she was going to be vindicated. I said, Kiki, Martel's PR person said, <laughs> said that he was going to be vindicated from this revenge P case, okay? And we all know that that was a lie because his ugly ass going to jail. But I'm hoping that ain't the same vindication you going to have. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, though, okay? So after that, y'all, after Carlos, you know, was done grilling her ass down to the white meat, he going to offer her, <coughs> he going to offer her his support, okay? And told her that he hopes that she was able to find, he hopes that she is able to find the help that she needs, making sure that she's okay. In other words, in my opinion, he was saying, bitch, I know you're using but just in case you're not, let me offer you my fake ass support in case you relapse and they decide to blame me for the shit. Okay? <clears throat> so now, y'all, we're going to move on. Now they done brought out the Fletchers and the Whitlows, okay? Before they got started with the questions, Carlos brought Chris up there um, where he wanted him to show him some of his dance moves since he seems to be, you know, Chris is a TikTok dancing sensation or whatever. So Carlos wants him, you know, to show him that little George Jefferson move that he didn't saw him do. And he did. He showed him and Carlos tried to copy, but that's about all he did. He tried. Okay. 
So next, y'all, Carlos decided to torture us all by playing footage of Martel's journey along the streets of Huntsville without his once upon a time wife, okay? He has now been forced to journey the streets with the bird that he lost his wife over, okay? And him don't like that, which is why he stayed begging Mel to take his sorry ass back. So of course, they had to bring up Sheree because she was a part of Martel's storyline. And they also brought, you know, brought up the crazy shit that Tiffany, Dorothy, there's no place like home, Hills, Wayne Whitlow said to Sheree, okay? They got her ass ambushed while she was pregnant by two grown ass men, meaning dumb and dumber, meaning Martel and Marceau. They showed where Chris brought up that Martel subpoenaed him to court. So they brought, you know, they showed that too. Um, subpoenaed him to court for him and Mel's custody case. Then they showed where Mel was talking about that prayer that Martel asked um, her to pray for them to get back together. <laughs> okay. When he was the only one on that. Okay. Um, and then they show his clown ass with Mel's ring on in Houston. And I don't care what nobody say. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And <clears throat> I'll address this in another video, but like I've said before, Martel's broke ass. He could have been using Mel's ring for his alleged marriage to Ariane. Cause we all know that Ariane ain't got no money to buy Martel no ring. Okay. And if he trying to ask the, how do I put it? He want to make the alleged marriage seem real. Okay. So he got to wear a ring to get the courts to believe the shit. Since he probably married her thinking that it would keep him out of jail. But like I said, I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. Okay. Correction. I have talked about it in a separate video. And y'all can go check that out. It's in my members group only, okay? They also show when Martel went by Neil's house that he was, uh, you know, he was screaming in her face. Y'all remember that video? Y'all remember that um, episode? He went by her house, was screaming in her face <clears throat> because he was mad. Because... She refused to believe that Mel cheated on him with multiple men during their marriage, okay? Now, they didn't show him yelling at Neil like the bitch that he is, but check this out. Because this proves just how crazy he is. Now, if y'all saw that scene, you know that Martel pretty much called Mel the hoe? A hoe that cheat that cheated on him during their marriage with multiple men. That's what he was trying to get Neil to believe, okay? But production didn't show that at the reunion. They showed the part that we didn't see, which was Martel sitting his ass on Neil's porch, telling Neil that he had spoken to Mel and told her that he had been working on himself. And he said that he asked Mel, <clears throat> he said, it's been three years. Do you see us getting back together? He told Neil that he asked Mel that. Can you believe that shit? How do you get on national television and pretty much call your ex-wife a hoe? <coughs> Excuse me. Lying through the teeth that she let you keep after the divorce. And then turn around and ask her if she see y'all getting back together. I'm pretty sure she will see a lot of things. Before she see y'all getting back together. And I know you're listening. I'm pretty sure she will see a lot of things. Before she see y'all getting back together. Including Sugar Mama's grandkids. Okay. Sugar Mama's grandkids. Grandkids. Okay. And even then. The shit still ain't going to happen. Crazy ass clown. Like what you mean? You've been working on yourself. He must have been talking about it in the gym. And even then. He should have kept that to himself. Because that would only remind her about you leaving the house during COVID, okay? For ass, lying saying that you was going to the gym when the gym and everything else was closed. The only thing that wasn't closed was coleslaw's mouth and legs, okay? And she discovered that <sighs> that was where he was, okay? The baby that he got coleslaw pregnant with had proven that. 
But let me continue. They also reserved a clip from Mel and Martell's meetup in the finale. The never seen clip that they showed in the reunion episode. Okay, and it consisted of Martell asking Mel if there was anything that he could say or do for her to forgive him for certain things that he's done. My thing is, <clears throat> every time she will forgive you in the past, clown, you would just go out and do the shit again because you knew that she was just going to forgive you, okay? Because you knew that she loved you and wanted her family to stay together. You used her forgiveness against her. In your mind, little buddy, you was going to do whatever you wanted to do in that marriage and just ask her to forgive you afterwards. And every time she forgave you, you got her hopes up, making her think that you was going to do right, only to take your ugly ass back out there and do the same shit that she had just forgiven you for. So when she told you that there was nothing that you could do or say for her to forgive you, please understand, okay, that you have maxed out your chances, okay? <clears throat> Had you sat your ass down somewhere, stopped seeing Ariane, went to go get counseling, did right by your ex-wife, and again, went and sat your ass down somewhere and waited to see if she would take your ass back, okay? If you would have done that. But instead, you used, okay, the past three years post-divorce to torture her. To torture your ex-wife. Use the bum that you cheated on her with to help torture her. You went so low as to try to take her children away from her. And I will repeat that shit a million times because that is the most disgusting and pathetic shit you could ever do. The thing that she loved the most in this world, which is her children, you tried to take that away from her. Like Mel said at the reunion, my boy, you are the lowest of the low and the scum of the earth. And for you to ask her if she saw y'all getting back together after everything that you've done, including trying to humiliate her before the world with that revenge P-tape, that shows just how much you need to be on medication, in my opinion. Something wrong with you. Like, seriously. Outside of you being a whole ass fucking clown. You made it your mission to literally destroy her and ended up destroying yourself in the process because she gone, okay? And the thing with Mel forgiving him is, Mel is going to eventually forgive him, in my opinion, because she knows that that's what God wants her to do. I feel like she told Martel that she wouldn't forgive him because she knows that in his mind, her forgiving him means that she will take him back. And that ain't the case. So she shuts down all of his hopes and dreams because she don't want to leave no room for him to think that they're going to get back together again. And he's so dumb that he don't realize that Mel can forgive him all day. But just because a person forgive you, that don't mean that they have to allow you back into their lives. Okay, them forgiving you ain't for you. It's for them so that they can move on without the baggage of hating your ass, okay? But let me continue. So after they all got done looking back over the footage of Martel's journey this season, Carlos told him that, you know, he was all over the place and asked him where was he, you know, when it came to his female relationships and asked him if he and Sheree were still together. Martel told Carlos that him and Sheree were never a couple, just friends. <sighs> But y'all remember that argument that him and Mel had got to got into online and he told Mel that she was just mad because his girl was, you know, was better than she was. Y'all remember that shit? But now he's saying that they were never a couple, just friends. But anyway, Then Carlos asked Kimmy about when she had said that Martel and Sheree looked like a business relationship because they pretty much didn't show any kind of affection towards one another, like kissing or holding hands, okay? Martel claims that they were at an event, so they weren't going to be tonguing each other down. 
I really don't care where they at. Whoever mess with my tail better know that it ain't safe to be tugging him down, in my opinion. Okay? After Ariane let us know where his tongue has been, okay? Whatever bitch wanna... <sighs> whenever bitch wanna run another one off, they tell folks that the dude been tossing her salad. Okay? Not tell dude, but... How do I put it? I don't think I said that right. Whenever a woman wants to run the other woman off okay they tell folks that the dude been tossing her salad okay i hope i said that right anyway <laughs> martel told kim not kimmy <laughs> martel told kimmy that he hadn't seen her and maurice kiss since the day that they got married and he lied and kimmy told him that he was lying he just wanted to say something because the jig was up okay he don't like being exposed, which is why his ass went storming off the stage when Mel got to talking about him and Sheree's dealings, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So Carlos asked Martel how he felt about people questioning the validity of him and Sheree's relationship because people were saying that him and Sheree made a pact to beat each other's storyline for relevance. So Martel began to do what he always does, which is lie, Okay. He gonna say that he didn't even want to film on her show on Sheree's show and I was just looking at <laughs> I was just looking at that milk dud shaking my head like why is you sitting up there <laughs> why is you sitting up there in that tumbled on high heat shrunken ass suit like, like that <laughs> You know damn well you want to film on that show. You couldn't get Kenya, so you settled for Sheree. <laughs> a dumb ass. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know damn well, okay? It was his goal to be an Atlanta housewife. <laughs> like, dude, you was on a mission. You was on a mission to obtain a peach because you just knew that the judge was going to rule in your favor when it came to that custody case, okay? And you was going to live half the hall, meaning be awarded child support from your children's hard-working mother, the only provider that your children have, okay? And then go buy a big, beautiful house in Atlanta, relocate the kids, and then go and live happily ever after. That's what you thought until the judge said that the only thing that you know, he or she was going to grant you was in order for your crazy ass to go to counseling, get a job so that you can take care of your damn self. And I heard that the judge even ordered for you to take a, a psych evaluation. And I feel like your ass failed it. So I don't know why your ass is still allowed to be out here on the loose and free to torture your ex-wife. So Martel said that Sheree was a cool girl and that they didn't have a business arrangement. They just enjoyed each other. Tiffany said, well, I would be surprised if you would have the conversation that you had with me regarding the things that I said to Sheree at your birthday party. If y'all weren't together or whatever. So Marcel going to start joking, telling Tiffany that Martel did come at her pretty aggressive. Knowing damn well he was the aggressive one because Martel put the battery in his back, okay? Martel planned that ambush that him and, Mar that him and um, Marceau did on Tiffany. A very pregnant woman at the time, okay? Met up with her under false pretenses so that they could ambush her with disrespect. Because they have no problem with being sassy and disrespectful to women. I feel like they're comfortable doing that because both Martel and Marceau feel like they are a woman deep down. Okay? Martel felt like, you know, Tiffany was being disrespectful and inappropriate when she asked Sheree those questions. But he found nothing wrong with recruiting his pal to help him ambush a man's pregnant wife. So Carlos asked Lou if he felt like Tiffany, you know, um, Tiffany Marceau and Martel's meetup was as, I guess, bad as Tiffany said that it was. And Big Lou said that Tiffany was spot on. However, she added a little bit. So Martel's old bald head ass was like, so I deserve an apology. Big Lou said, I ain't said shit about no apology because at the end of the day, it shouldn't have taken two men to meet up with one woman. And he's absolutely correct. But Martel and Marso are women at heart. You know what I'm saying? They're women at heart, in my opinion. So they probably feel like they didn't do nothing wrong. Martel going to say, me and Tiffany had a meeting 
and Marceau inserted himself. Marceau inserted himself per your request, in my opinion. So please stop. Marceau was like, and didn't you hear me say that we should get Big Lou involved? Big Lou said, yeah. But that was after y'all had already sat with her and talked with her for 30 minutes. And I remember that. Martel waited until he was leaving to say that he was going to call Big Lou after he didn't already ambush his pregnant wife. That meeting was all Martel's doing because that didn't have shit to do with Marceau. So next, y'all, um, they had addressed, uh, what was they talking about? They had addressed Marceau calling Tiffany a Karen, okay? Carlos asked Tiffany if she was offended, and she said, yeah, because she's the closest to white than any of them are and, you know, was raised by her white family. However, she said that she didn't know how to take it coming from Marceau and Martel. Martel told her, just know that it was negative. And I said, she knows that, Martel, because nothing you say or do is positive. But got the nerve to wonder why people always say negative shit about your ass. But anyway, y'all. Marceau said him calling Tiffany a Karen had nothing to do with her being white, but with how she acted. Carlos asked Marceau what was his definition of a Karen, and he said someone who was over-opinionated and puts their opinions over others. Tiffany and Lou was like, well, you must have been talking about yourself. Marceau said, I don't put my opinions off on others. If so, tell me a time when I did. Lou just looked at him like the joke that he is. Martel told Tiffany that Marceau was calling her Karen because of her Caucasian side. And Marceau said that he wasn't, he wouldn't do that because he's, you know, that's racist and he don't say racist stuff like that. And that, you know, there were white women out there that were not Karens. I said, like, like the one that they out here saying that you cheated on Tisha with? Okay. So Carlos asked Marceau if a black woman could be a Karen. And Marceau told him that he knew a mixed one could be me and Tiffany. So Carlos, <laughs> Carlos wanted to back things up and put the spotlight back on Marlene's dusty ass son. Okay, so he asked Martel why him and Sheree stopped seeing each other. Martel gave some bullshit ass reason saying that he wanted to refocus himself on life and business. I said, you mean refocus on your ex-wife? Because that's where your focus been since she left your ass. And what business? The only business you focus on is male's business, okay? Carlos told Martel that Sheree said over on the Real Housewives of Atlanta that she stopped seeing him due to the negative press that he was getting. See, I just said this in my uh, previous commentary that him and Sheree were never on the same page. Martel said that he had never heard that about what Sheree said. And I just mentioned this shit a couple of days ago about how they dumb asses couldn't even get their lives together. Martel and Sheree was never on the same page when it came to, you know, their made for TV ass and made for a check as relationship, okay? Marceau told Martel that he had fell into Carlos' trap. He had fallen into, you know, Carlos' trap because when he asked him why he had stopped seeing Sheree, he said to separate himself or whatever. So Martel then said, okay, well, we were dating, even though he pretty much kind of said that they weren't. So Carlos then says, so you were seeing Sheree. But there were moments when you were flirtatious with your ex-wife. Do you have a hard time dating other women because you're still in love with your ex-wife? And that was one of the dumbest fucking questions Carlos could have asked Martel because Martel dated other women while he was married. He was a single married man. He cheated on Mel for multiple years of their marriage with multiple women. So if it wasn't hard for him to date other women, you know what I'm saying, while he was married, why would it be hard for him to date after the marriage. This is why I say that this was just a way to let Mel know that Martel still want his family back because Carlos, in my opinion, wants Mel and Martel to get back together, even though he knows how toxic their relationship was. And even though he knows of the things that Martel has done to her, okay? Disrespected her, cheated on her, had a baby on her, tried to take her kids away, threatened her with revenge, P. Still going around to this day saying that she a hoe that she was a hoe during the marriage. But Carlos, he don't care about that, in my opinion. He care more about the ratings of the show. And he believes, in my opinion, that Mel and Martel getting back together would be good for the show. What would be good for the show would be for him to release Martel from the show because a demotion ain't good enough. Release his divorce, broke, no storyline, having an ass from the show and make room for someone with substance to come through, okay? But he ain't gonna do that until he's forced to do that. 
After the revenge P case, he may be forced to fire Martell, depending on the outcome. Hopefully, his ass is sent to jail. Okay? So back to this dumbass question that Carlos asked Martell. So his goofy looking ass going to say, who said I still have feelings for my ex-wife? Y'all, he is such a clown. Like him continuously begging her to take him back in a dead giveaway along with his empty ass bank account. Carlos said, well, the cameras have seen it and you had a conversation with um, Nell too. And you said it to her. And he did because they showed the scene where he was on Nell's porch talking about he never wanted to get the divorce in the first place. Okay? We know you didn't. Because you wanted Mel to remain in the marriage while you took your nasty ass to the swamp and played around with straight ass alligators, okay? So, Martel was like, what did I say to Nell? I said, why are you asking? Okay? Now, he, he, matter of fact, this was when, yeah, he was now talking to Nell, okay? And he had asked Nell, what did I say to you, Nell, or something like that. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, why are you asking Nell what you said? Carlos asked you. So why don't you answer the question? It's like, he always cutting people off when they trying to speak. People as a male. And it's like, now that your ugly ass had a floor, you want to recruit others to answer a question that was directed to you. But Nell said, you told me that you still had feelings for Mel and that you still loved her. And if you could change everything, you would change everything. <laughs> Meaning, including them damn babies that he didn't create with Arian. And it would only be Mel. So, after Nell said what she said, Martel said, cool. He is just too fucking dumb for words. He was asked a question, okay? He was asked a question. He got a bird at the house, y'all, that he don't want to piss off because he needs her right now. So he called on someone else to answer the question that he was asked regarding if he still had feelings for his ex-wife. Because we all know that he been feeding his baby mama lies, okay? Which is why his baby mama say shit like, Mel wants Martel back, okay? When Martel don't even want Martel. She the only one that want my tail. Ariane. If he could, Martel would step outside of his body and be somebody else if it meant that he could be back with Mel. Okay? So now that he had gotten Nell to answer the question for him, when Ariane asked him about it, he going to say, well, Nell said that. Nell said I was still in love with uh, Mel. I didn't say that. <sighs> You may not have said it on the stage, but you said it to Neil, dummy. But he knows that he got a slow one at the house, so he know it don't take much convincing, okay? Ariane gonna fall for anything that he say, including sleeping with other women is for their future. And because her unemployed ass relying on him to take care of her, she just gonna fall back with her dumb ass and allow him to do what he gonna do. But let me carry on. So Mel was like, see... That's the shit I hear, too, about how if he could change everything, he would. Of course he would, because he over there stranded with Angela's daughter. No GPS, no food, no money, no chairs, no nothing. Of course he want his good thing back, but it's too late. Late like Ariane was when a doctor told her happy ass that she was pregnant with a child that he conceived with her while he was married. Silly rabbit, she thought that she hit the jackpot with that baby, didn't she? Only to find out that his wife was the jackpot. But anyway, Marso had, you know, what did he say? Marso had mumbled that Martel had told that to someone there at the reunion that day that he was still, that, that he still had feelings for Mel. He wanted that to get back to Mel, y'all. Uh, Martel wanted that to get back to Mel. And he wanted them to talk about that, which is why I wish they hadn't. And I wish Nell would have just kept what she said to herself. Martel knows that three years done hit. And he was thinking that Mel would have taken him back by now. But as always, that he is looking like the clown that he is. Because she ain't trying to have nothing to do with his ass. You know what I'm saying? She's more gone today than she was when she left his ass. But as long as Mel remain unmarried, little buddy feel like he has a chance. But the truth of the matter is that 
he'll have a better chance at becoming the first lady of the United States than he do getting back with Mel. Okay. So Carlos asked Martel how he felt when he heard about Mel's name changing ceremony. Did he feel like it was the nail in the coffin? The nail in the coffin was when he tried to take her kids away from her. He had that custody stunt in his clip. Okay. Like, bitch, you leave me and I'm going to pull the trigger. All that I'm the dominant father and she has 20 something babysitters and her not bathing the baby. All of that, all of them lies was to help him obtain custody so he could then regain control over Mel and her money. She already don't get to see her kids every day because she have to share them with his ass because he let raccoon puss cost him his family. So he could no longer remain in the home with his family, with his children. So, you know. He wanted to take her children away from her completely. You know what I'm saying? Just because she didn't want his ass no more. Ain't no coming back from that in my opinion. His broke ass already ain't paying child support. She taking care of the kids and still providing food. Okay? And lights for his bum ass. But she had to go and pay for lawyers to fight for her children. Like she was a terrible ass mother when that would be Ariane. You know the bitch who's sitting on her own child? She was sitting on her own child and didn't even realize it until her sister came to rescue him. He was yelping for help and everything. But she was too engrossed in that live that she was on that she didn't hear. So as far as how Martel felt about Mel's, uh, about Mel changing her name, Martel said that he could see if she was getting married. But to just change it out of the blue, why would she do that? I said, for the same reason she divorced your ass. She don't want nothing else to do with you. Accept it. And you don't have to understand it. Why she changed her name. Just know that she did. You will never understand it because you don't want to understand it. The truth of the matter is that who wants to walk around with a last name that is connected to trash? A family of criminals, cheaters, liars. I would say give it to Ariane. I'm sure she would gladly accept it, but you probably didn't already did that. But won't allow her to use your last name because you're embarrassed of her. You know she ain't no male. So, Mel asked Martel, why does it matter that I changed my last name? He said it don't, but we were discussing it. So, I was just speaking on it. Mel was like, yeah, but you also, you know, you was also discussing it with Nell too. And that brings me to this question being another dumbass question from Carlos for Martel. Like, why is you asking him how he felt about, you know, Mel's name changing ceremony or her changing her last name when you filmed a whole damn scene that let you know how he felt about it? He was about to tear Nell's head off when she mentioned the name changing ceremony. Martel going to say we were filming. We were filming a scene, so I'm sorry. That's why I brought it up. But Nell was like, we talked about it in scene and out of scene, so don't even try it. And then Mel said, and he done said little things to me off camera too, so you're not going to go around uh, trying to make folks think that you um, discussing my name change just for the camera, okay? So Carlos then asked Martel if he felt like if he told the world that he was still in love with Mel, she would take it and run with it. Marceau said, uh, or you gonna get in, or because you're gonna get in trouble with your wife and then um what did she say no Mel was like there you go Marso thank you so that right there okay Mel saying that made me feel like she already knew that Martel and Ariane were married oh, allegedly okay and in my opinion I feel like that could have made her go ahead and change her last name because like I said Mel ain't about to walk around with the same last name as Ariane like, it's only, you know what I'm saying, going to be one Miss Hope outside of your mama. That's probably how Mel was looking at it. Okay? And now your baby mama got it. She can have it. That's my opinion, okay? She can have you and the name. Because neither one is about shit. But I get into that. I keep saying I get into that, but I got to remember that I've already gotten into it. I up uploaded that um, video yesterday, actually, y'all, where I had got into um, all of that about the alleged marriage and what male may know and all that. So y'all can join my membership if y'all want to check that out. Okay. So after Martel looked at Marceau, like, 
Why would you say that? And we on national TV. And after Neil asked who his wife was and was ignored, Martel answered Carlo's question with a no. Mel running with it was not the reason he was not telling the world that he was still in love with Mel. And honestly, I don't even know if I would say that he's in love with her because how can he love her and do the things that he's done to her? You know what I'm saying? I don't even think he loves himself or his kids because he acts as if he don't even care about the kids until it comes time to use them. Okay. So Carlos then asked Martel if he was in a relationship with his baby mama. And Martel said, no, I'm not. I'm single. And that was actually the truth because he's been single even while he was married. He's not in a relationship with Ariane, but Ariane is in a relationship with him. Okay? Which is why Marceau asked him, well, does your baby mama think you're in a relationship? Marceau was trying to be funny, but I feel like, you know, he was seeing... <sighs> Marceau was... I feel like he was being truthful, okay? He was playing, but he was telling the truth and thought that the mic was not going to pick it up. Okay, but it did. So, Mel said that Martel was lying. Carlos said, so you think he's in a relationship? Mel said, I do, because she's there almost every day when my kids are there. Mel knows that Martel don't want the world to know that He's with that girl, in my opinion, unless it's time for them to get a check or beat that revenge P charge, in my opinion. So she outed him because she tired of his bald head ass lying so much, in my opinion. And Ariane should be somewhat crying because, you know what I'm saying? Because on national TV, in that scene, he pretty much called her babysitter. And I'm about to talk about that, okay? So Carlos asked Mel if it hurts her to know that Martell's piranha mouth ass baby mama is around her kids. She said it don't hurt her and that she goes into protective mode more than anything. Mel said, I'm never about to trust a bitch who adored my family set up so much that she worked her ass off to come in between it. Of course, with the help of Martell, but still. So Martell's stupid ass going to say, um, our children are fine. Our children are perfectly fine. Your children ain't going to never be perfectly fine because you their daddy they'll be taken care of yes because of their mama their sole provider but they're gonna always be affected by the fact that you their daddy if your kids were perfectly fine the judge wouldn't have ordered you to go into therapy with them especially your son whose head you use as your own personal drum okay you mad because his mama don't want you no more so you decided to use his head as a musical instrument Everything your clown ass do affects your kids, whether you see it now or it shows up later with your dumb ass. Tank going to Google his name one day and your dumb ass crimes going to pop up. He going to have to walk around with a sign taped to the front of his shirt saying it wasn't me until he gets old enough to go and do what his mama did, which is change his name, which he'll probably do as soon as he turns 18. I knew I would. So Mel went into more depth as to why she didn't trust Baby Shark, okay, around her kids or want her around her kids, okay? She said, for her, it's knowing that they are around someone who has such nasty and vile things to say about their mother. And she not lying because that bird done said all kinds of shit about Mel, you know, and on a public platform. That girl despises Mel and her kids. Therefore, she should not be around them kids for any reason because no telling what she would do, especially if Martel is leaving her alone with them. Mel better get them some boxing lessons, okay, <clears throat> so they can be trained to go right upside her motherfucking head, okay, if need be. So Mel was explaining to Carlos how she felt about Martel having her kids around his trash-ass baby mama, and Martel didn't like that because... It showed the world just how disgusting he is. So he cut Mel off while she was speaking and started talking about how many babysitters she had, which had absolutely nothing to do with what Mel was talking about, unless he considers Ariane to be just a babysitter. And that would be accurate because he damn sure ain't trying to take care of all them kids for seven days by himself. He can't do shit by himself. 
Everybody else has to do it for him. So since Arion works for free, he uses her. He uses her to babysit for him, uses her for happy endings, uses her to clean, uses her to cook, uses her to help him commit crimes, uses her to attack his ex-wife online. And she's more than happy to be used, which is why he going to use her up till she can't be used no more. Okay. So his stupid ass going to say, well, I can just imagine the 11 babysitters you had. And I'm like, first of all, I thought your line ass said she had 20 something babysitters. I guess he reduced the number to make his claim more believable. Epic fail. Cause she didn't have no 11 babysitters either. And what his clown ass don't realize is that had he been a real man and cared enough about his children, that he would have gotten himself together so he could remain in the home with his children so that they wouldn't even be around one babysitter. Mel needing a babysitter, period, is his fault. Because not only is she a single mother, thanks to him, but she's the one that has to go out there and earn money to take care of them kids. Because guess what? She can't rely on her kids' good-for-nothing-ass daddy to do it. Because he busy buying Skittles and tight-ass suits, Okay and gas to travel to Atlanta to do absolutely nothing. Okay? And ain't got no money to take care of his kids. He don't even have enough money to feed them, which is why Mel has to drop them off food while they're with him for his seven days. Okay? And people been saying, if I was Mel, I wouldn't be dropping off no food. But when you think about it, Mel or any other mother, it's not going to allow her kids to starve just because they daddy a bum. She drops that food off so her kids can eat. They have to eat. Secondly, Mel probably knows that Martell is looking for an excuse to not have to deal with them kids, and she ain't going to give it to them. All that I ain't got enough money to get them this week or I ain't got no food. Yeah, that shit may be true, but at the same time, he may be looking for a way that he don't have to deal with them kids no more, or at least for a whole week. Just my opinion, because they are of no use to him anymore okay narcs can for sure discard their children just like they discard women martel can't profit off of them anymore he can't film with them because he was trying to hurt their mother when he requested that they not film anymore and ended up hurting himself he don't have to act like the perfect father anymore because the custody case is over and he lost so in his mind does he really have a need for the kids in my opinion I know it sounds harsh, but when you're dealing with a narcissist, okay, one hard reality is that, you know, one hard reality that you have to face is that they don't give a fuck about them kids. They don't be giving a fuck about them kids. They can literally stop talking to them and act as if they never existed, especially if they know that it's going to hurt the kid's mother. I'm not just running my mouth. I'm speaking facts. Because I've experienced it. So Mel probably does what she does because she's not about to give him an easy way out of being a father. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't be a decent husband. So, you know, the least he can do is be a father. Especially when she's out there trying to secure their future. So they won't be out here like their daddy with that one. Okay? So while she was explaining to the world why she goes into protective mode while her kids are at their trifling ass daddy's house and he got his hoe around her kids, his immature little bill looking ass started looking up to the sky talking about some 11 babysitters he claiming that she has. And anybody with eyes could see that his ass was lying. He was looking upward because he was pulling down lies. And let's just say that Mel did have 11 babysitters. Whatever it takes to get the fucking job done, since your ass couldn't get it done. And even if she did have 11 babysitters, <laughs> ain't neither one of them, no fucking Ariane. Her babysitters wouldn't be ratchet and vile and slow and hateful and overall just a bad influence and dangerous for the kids. So what you talking about? Absolutely nothing as usual. Dumbass. He sounded so damn stupid. Just so, it's so disgusting. He's disgusting. And he takes up for Ariane, for one, because he knows that it bothers Mel. And for two, he knows Ariane ain't shit, but he knows that the world knows that he fucks with her. So he have to try to make it seem like she's not as bad as folks know she is. He loves painting false narratives, y'all. 
He loves it. So Mel was telling his sorry ass that he knows of all the things that Ariane has done to her, tortured her for years, you know, with her bullshit, trying hard to break up their marriage and just a lot of the shit that she did. Martel had her do. That's why he don't care about nothing Mel saying. Ariane was his weapon against Mel. When Ariane was doing that shit to Mel, calling her up and shit, telling her that Martel was eating her like a champ, when she got mad, you know what I'm saying? She said that when she told Martel what she had said to Mel, he didn't do nothing but laugh. He wanted to hurt Mel. And he didn't care about Ariane hurting Mel. He wanted to make Mel jealous. He wanted to control Mel's feelings, okay? He a fucking demon. And so is his baby mama. And that's exactly why they ain't going to never get nowhere in life. Because they are the epitome of evil. And yeah, I know that both of them are slow. And that plays a part in, you know, why they think like they do and do the things that they do. But they are also evil. Okay? And done had a little evil ass son. Because every time you see him, he mean mugging. Knox is mean mugging. I mean, I guess I would too if Martell and Ariane were my parents. And that's the same little boy that has to be around Sugar Mama and the rest of the kids. You already know that his parents ain't teaching them shit because they don't know shit because ain't nobody taught them shit. I already know that Ariane be over there trying to compare Knox to Sugar Mama to make herself feel better when she know damn well that boy is out of Sugar Mama's league, okay? Sugar Mama is a whole ass business owner out here. Knox may get candy, but Sugar Mama gets money, okay? They are not the same. Now, let me move on because it ain't that boy's fault that they his parents, okay? So, y'all, next, Martel going to say that he's open and easy when it comes to certain things that Mel requests, but it's difficult when he requests something. And that is proof right there that he does shit, you know what I'm saying, like have Ariane around his kids knowing that she don't want, she don't want that because... Mel won't give him what he wants, okay? So she not he not going to give her what she wants, which is to not have Ariana around the kids, okay? What Martel wants is to have access back into Mel's life. His number one goal in life, okay, is to hurt Mel because she won't take him back. He not out here setting regular goals. He out here trying to figure out ways to hurt Mel because he can't have her back. And as far as him talking about requests, in my opinion, okay, when Mel make requests regarding the kids, they're reasonable requests. When Martel make requests, they're not. He be requesting shit like his wife back and it ain't going to happen. So Mel went into saying how um, first right of refusal is overnight. And she ain't never had you no know, 11 babysitters watch her kids overnight. But Martel was sitting up there lying saying that she had. Like, well, it's in the paperwork. That's what Martel said. Well, it's in the paperwork. And you could tell that he was lying because he started making all them stupid looking ass facial expressions. Okay. Baby, Mel wasn't about to play with him. She said, bitch, no, it's not. Okay. Because I know what's in the paperwork. So let me tell you what's in the paperwork. You admitting to you and Sheree's relationship being a business arrangement clown. That's in the paperwork. So y'all, Mel out of his ass. And he got mad and embarrassed and needed to go in the back and cry. So he told Mel that he was going to go and get the paperwork. And then he dipped down in that tight ass suit. He dipped down, y'all, and then skipped off the stage. Because <laughs> he was mad. <laughs> he was mad because <laughs> he had just been exposed. <laughs> Mel was like, please do. Please go get the paperwork. And he stormed off the stage like a little ass boy in that little ass suit saying that Mel is such a fucking liar. I said, no, that would be you. And that's why you mad because <laughs> your line ass being exposed and everybody on that stage, including Carlos was laughing at his ass because they know that Mel was telling the truth about him and Sheree. Plus they know how ridiculous he looked walking off that damn stage in that little ass fucking suit. Okay. My soul was like, Mel, you sat back and let Martel answer all them questions about being in a business relationship. <laughs> and you knew <laughs> Mel said, I was just sitting here. And, at, you know, as she always does, she just sit back and watch his ass lie. And he's used to that. So when Mel be having her moments where she just be like, no, I'm not about to let that last lie. 
he want to threaten her, okay? So y'all, Martel came fast walking back onto the stage with them bullshit ass receipts. That bogus ass paperwork that he claims that Mel had all them, you know, babysitters or whatever. The same papers he sent to the bloggers to get them to say shit about Mel and the court case that would make it seem like the case was going in his favor when it wasn't. Case in point, he didn't win custody. He didn't get his legal fees paid for. He didn't win child support, all of which his bum ass requested in court. So he brought his ass back out there with them bullshit ass papers talking about some, what document was that? He's like, what document is that in, liar? And going to put the papers in her face and tell her to find it. She said, no, you find it. Go to the page where my attorney asked you about your relationship with Sheree. But of course, that wasn't going to be nowhere to be found in the paperwork Martel brought with him, okay? Because those weren't the real papers. You know what I'm saying? He probably wanted Mel to look at the papers because he probably wrote a threat on the first page telling her to shut the fuck up, exposing his stupid ass, okay? Sounds like something he would do in my opinion. Mel said that, you know, what did she say? She was like, that shit ain't the transcript where the clerk was typing. Martel was so mad, y'all. He said, <laughs> he said, you are such a liar. <laughs> Mel said, oh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is pay for the real transcript and prove that your ass is the liar by the time the reunion is. And I'm hoping that she actually went through with that. Not because we need it, because we know that Martel is lying. But I love it when she exposed Martel's lies to the world. Because that's all the fuck you do is lie. Okay, but got the nerve to try to call somebody else a lie, just like he's a cheater. Had a whole baby outside the marriage, but going around calling somebody else a cheater, calling her a cheater. So he up on stage putting on this dramatic ass performance, talking about, you know, what he say? He say a business arrangement. Yes, a business arrangement. <laughs> Mel's attorney. <laughs> I said, Mel's attorney asked your ass in court about you and Sheree's relationship, and you told him that it was a business arrangement. Okay? You just thought that Mel wasn't going to expose your ass. <laughs> Mel told Carlos that them papers Martel handed him to look at are the same papers that he sent to the blogs to get them to talk about their kids' court case, which was a disgrace, okay? Then she told his ass that he was the lowest of the low of the scum of this earth, and she ain't never lied. She said, Martel, you are the lowest of the low of the scum of this earth. <laughs> oh, and like I said, she ain't never lied. But of course, Martel was on stage screaming that she was a liar. Okay, so when Mel said, <laughs> Martel, you are the lowest of the low and the scum of the earth, Martel screamed like the bitch that he is and said, liar. <laughs> He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so because <laughs> so because Carlos is fully aware of all of Martel's angry and violent outbursts, <laughs> he stood up and got in Martel's face, telling him that he needed to chill, and told Martel that he needed him to respect him. Because Martel, <clears throat> he was having a temper tantrum, y'all. Screaming at Mel, telling her that she was making him look bad on TV and on the internet. I said, no, little buddy. You, <laughs> you making yourself look bad. You don't need no help with that. Everything that she said that you done did, you done did. Okay? And that's some shit that you done did that she ain't even spoken about. Okay? <clears throat> that's just how terrible you are. What it is that he wants somebody to protect him and make him look like something that he's not, which is a good guy. Like, dude, you're not a good guy, though. You're a terrible guy. <coughs> so instead of getting, you know, mad at somebody else, instead of getting mad at somebody for exposing you about the shit that your terrible ass has actually done, go get some help and do better. Now, I know Marlene Baseball Knees ass done told you that Ain't nothing wrong with her boy, but I beg to differ. I object. I hereby sentence you 
to a lifetime of fucking therapy because you need it, sis. So Carlos got little buddy to calm down and then he moved on. Carlos said, I'm so happy you two have moved on from each other. I said, oh, really? You know damn well you want them back together. But anyway, Mel is the only one that has moved on. Martel ain't, which is the problem. This his problem. So Mel was like, yes, you see how toxic it was in that house? Martel said, not like this. Mel said, oh, yes, it was. That's why I beat your ass that time. And she cocked her head to the side and started swinging her leg. And that shit was so funny. That was her way of saying, nah, 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 nah. I beat your ass, sis. <laughs> and everybody was acting like they was just so shocked. But men can get their ass beat, too. Especially when they ain't a real one, okay? Mel saw a bitch standing before her. And she activated and beat his ass, okay? Martel going to say, now, let a man say that. I said, boy, shut the fuck up. And that was all with that scene, y'all. Okay. Next, they started talking about Tiffany's struggles with postpartum. She didn't think that that would ever be her, but it was. And I really wasn't into this scene, y'all. I mean, it's not because I'm not sympathetic towards folks because I am. It's just because I didn't see Tiffany fucking with Kiki in a way that she shouldn't have for pretty much the entire season. So at what time was you depressed? Give me a timestamp. Because I'm sure at whatever time you give, you will be seen on Kiki's ass, okay? So, it's like, was you really depressed or was you just disappointed because Lou wasn't about to be the baby's full-time nanny like you probably thought that he was going to be, okay? I feel like she thought that she was going to snap right back into her regular life because she had plans to throw that baby on Lou. But anyway, Lou was like, bang, bang. I'm on the road and you and Ace are wine, wine. <laughs> Child, please. But anyway, y'all, Tiffany was so busy fucking with Kiki that folks didn't even know that she was depressed. And that's if her ass was even depressed. But anyway, Lou was on the road for a while, but when he came back, he said that he noticed certain things about Tiffany. Okay, so <coughs> Carlos brought up um, the fact that Tiffany wanted to walk away from the show. And I feel like she made that choice because she knew if she didn't walk away, she was going to end up getting carried away on a stretcher. Okay. Cause Kiki was bound to knock her ass back to Oregon or wherever the fuck she came from. Carlos asked her, was that a decision that she was sticking to meaning leaving the show? In other words, you know, um, have she changed her mind about walking away from the show? And she said that it was refreshing for her and Lou to have their space and live, you know, their normal lives. But at the same time, she enjoy the relationships that has been established. So it's hard to think about, you know, <clears throat> it's hard to think about the decision making when it comes to that, because she likes being on the show, being messy, that is. But is it safe, bitch? Okay. Is it safe? You like it till you find yourself getting up at the bushes like Evelyn Hosada did. But anyway, Carlos told her that the door was always open for her to come back whenever she was ready because, you know, he knows right now she's focusing on herself and, I guess, keeping her teeth in her mouth, okay? Marcel going to tell her that they want her back. I said, shut up, because you want Karen back now? You want her back? But anyway, Kimmy felt like, you know, they could have done a better job at being there for her for her or whatever. Um, she said that, you know, when they would go to different events, uh, I think she said Tiffany wasn't around. So they weren't able to see her face to face to see if she was really doing OK or whatever. But anyway, I'm about to move on. OK. Um, so next, y'all, they brought out Betty, old rough face ass and her nephew, Junior who looked like he was a lost member of somebody's mariachi band, okay, with that damn suit on. Betty, okay, she started, as soon as she got on the stage, Carlos said hello to her. And her hello back to him was dry as fuck. Carlos asked her if she was happy to be there because she didn't act like she was, okay? But she was happy to be there because it gave her an opportunity to combat the woman that her and her jealous ass daughter hate. So Critter Betty said it had been a long day. 
that's why her hello was dry like that okay i reckon it had been i reckon it had been a hard day especially for the stylist and wardrobe person because i know it takes a lot of work to make her ass look like something so carlos started talking about how stormy and courtney experienced the ups and downs of running a business in the ground that is then started talking about you know stormy's family's war or whatever all of which i didn't give a fuck about okay because the truth of the matter is that she had no storyline which is why she kept trying to film with kiki pretending like she was kiki's friend them little rinky dink ass scenes that she had with her mama her auntie her cousin even herself they could have asked that shit out they could have asked her ass out because folks are just not interested in her so they started playing clips of you know the season including the one where she was supposed to had fired her cousin junior but i don't believe she fired him okay that shit was for tv in my opinion y'all know you know she think that she's an actress over there acting like she fired one of the five workers that she had and over there acting like she rich bitch please but anyway I don't even believe she fired that boy because if I'm not mistaken, I believe Miss Black Titanic said that Junior was there at the warehouse the day that she had paid Stormy a visit. I think that's what she said, okay? Y'all know how most of the cast from the show be lying, so I don't think Stormy fired Junior, okay? But anyway, they started playing clips of her family, the situation with her mom and her auntie, and that made-for-TV ass fish fry like get the fuck out of here with that shit then they showed a clip of when she was telling um when betty was telling stormy that when she first met mel she didn't like her and she was feeding off her energy like i said betty didn't have a real reason not to like mel other than her daughter wasn't her okay if everybody don't like mel it's like get the fuck off her show but they're not gonna do that because all they broke asses need that check so they show where Betty was telling Stormy if they not adding value, what good are they? And I believe she was talking about Mel. So let me say this. Mel is adding value to every one of those motherfuckers on the show because she's helping them feed their families. And if they humble themselves and get a notebook and pen and take some fucking notes, they can learn about what it is to be a real business person and not the fake ones like they on TV pretending to be. You know what I'm saying? Now that is value for that ass, okay? Then they showed the clip of the tea party, okay? Where that old hag had the nerve to walk her disturbed ass in there into Mel's event with her disturbed ass daughter and tell Mel to shut up, accusing her of trying to diminish what her daughter have, what her daughter have done or something like that because mel didn't get in the comments and save stormy from the viewers wrath okay mel ain't got no control over what people say just like stormy say that she ain't got no control over what her mama say okay because her mama got her ass online and called mel a hoe if mel can weather that then her daughter can weather whatever was being said to her fat ass i'm tired of them talking about some mel tried to diminish what her daughter had bitch that shit was diminished when <sighs> I don't even know, know what to say at this point. Stormy was a mess when she got her ass onto the show. Stormy wanted to be something that she's not. And she get mad when she's not viewed in the same light as Mel. Because that's who she want to be. And always trying to blame other folks for how she out here looking. And always want to blame other folks for her business falling in the trash. Like, bitch, you are the reason. Stormy is the reason for everything that's happening to her scamming ass, in my opinion. That bitch like to take people money. Judges have had to make her pay all them folks back, and that don't include her fucking customers. I feel like a class action lawsuit is coming for her ass soon, because you can't keep fucking over people, and that shit not catch up to you. I heard that she was transferring her property into Courtney's name to get out of paying people what she owed or to keep them from taking her property because of her debt or something like that. That's what I heard from another channel. I haven't really looked into it. Some of it I looked into, but I need to do, I need to look at it some more. Okay. But that's what I've heard. Um, it really don't matter because I already know that Miss Potato Head ain't shit. Cause I got ass and I got ears. I've been watching the show. Just like I've been watching her customers complain about her trifling ass business practices, okay? So Carlos asked Petty Betty 
What was it about Mel that made her feel like she wasn't a good friend of Stormy? See, I told y'all Carlos always asking dumbass questions. Because what he should have talked about, okay, was how Stormy wasn't being a good friend to Mel. But let's take it back real quick, okay? When Stormy first came onto the show, her and Mel had only known each other for like four months. I believe so there was no hardcore friendship there on either end i feel like stormy preyed on mail just like that snake preyed on her dog and had his ass running around with lampshades around his neck that was probably the same snake that stormy had around her neck when she went to the club like who goes to the fucking club with a snake around their neck only somebody who is desperate for attention just like she plotted to get on the show because she was desperate for attention now she on the show she got the folks attention it ain't nobody's fault. It ain't the kind of attention that she wanted. Okay. Yes. Mel made a comment, but she didn't say that it was, you know, directed at Stormy. Just like Betty made a comment talking all this shit about her and Stormy didn't say shit, but mama, you always been right about my friends. I hope you wrong this time. Stupid ass bitch. Mel don't owe you nothing. Just like you felt you didn't owe her nothing and didn't disclose the fact that you and your husband was cool with Ariane, the bitch that helped destroy her family. You're going to lie and say you told Mel that already, knowing that you didn't tell her. Because had you told her that shit, your ass wouldn't have gotten on the show and you know that. So you kept that shit to yourself until after you got on the show. And then not only was you cool with Ariane, but you started hanging out with her ops and was even hanging out with Martel and Sheree. All in the camera with Sheree, but tried to clown Mel because she took a picture with Sheree many years ago. You tried to call her a fan. No, you're the fan. Okay? And you wasn't the only one in Mel's home. So when she said that, you know, that's why she have her home check for recording devices, she wasn't necessarily talking to you. You just want to blame somebody else other than yourself for the viewers not liking your ass. The viewers see that you are a jealous, hateful, lying ass snake. That ain't got shit to do with Mel, but everything to do with you. And y'all, that's disgusting as shit that she's, you know, the shit that she said about uh, uh, Tisha and Marceau, that disgusting ass shit that she said about Tisha and Marceau, about how they will never do what she's done or whatever, never be able to do what she do. And the only reason folks know them is because of the show. Just saying all kinds of nasty shit. Okay, they ain't nobody. That's how she feel about all of them on the cast, including Mel. Okay, Tater had felt like she was the real star and thought that she was going to come on that show and take over. And she quickly learned that that wasn't going to happen. Can't speak a lick of English, in my opinion, but think she better than somebody. How? <sighs> but let me continue. So Stormy came at Mel talking about pretty much Mel saw people coming for her over you know, the comment that she had made, which she felt insinuated that she was the person in her home that couldn't be trusted and that possibly recorded her. Mel said she came back and said that it wasn't Stormy. Stormy said, but you didn't do that until after my mama had that big blow up. Mel said, that's the thing. Why did your mama even have to ha have to have a blow up? You could have came to me and said, Mel, they coming for me or whatever. <laughs> like, bitch, your mama ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Betty said that she's been watching the show from season one. And figure, you know, in my opinion, I I feel like she figured that her daughter could go on the show and take Mel's place. Okay? She didn't like Mel from the jump. So she probably encouraged Tater Head to try to get on the show. So she owned there. So it's like, take what comes with that, which is the public's opinion. Why do she even, you know, why do Betty even have Mel's name in her mouth is the question. Stormy went into saying that she didn't have Mel's phone number and wasn't in contact with her. So that's why she didn't contact her. Betty going to say that Mel could have came to them groups that was pretty much talking shit about Stormy and say that that's not what happened. My thing is, why was Carlos even allowing her to speak? Because that had absolutely nothing to do with Betty. She wasn't even on the show when that went down. As much mouth and face as Tater Head got, she can defend herself. And when she can't, she can just go cry about it. Nobody cares. Betty going to say that Mel should have publicly defended Stormy because she put something out there that was uh, misinterpreted or whatever. So Stormy said 
you ain't got to clear up nothing with the fans because they going to talk. But they were under your post going in on me like I was some vile person. I said, bitch, you are vile. Calling people husband bitches, calling Tisha Ho and your mama vile as well. You may not have come in Mel's home and recorded, but you still ain't shit. And Mel know that, which is why she cut ties with you. Okay? Mel said they were going in on you over my one tweet. Over my one tweet? Stormy said, yeah. And that was a lie, okay? It wasn't just about the tweet. It's like, girl, except the fact that folks don't like your ass. Mel said, oh, I didn't see all that. Stormy said, you can say you didn't see it, but I know that you did. I said, so what if she did? She owes you nothing, okay? Mel said, how do you know what I know? Stormy said, because you see everything else. <clears throat> no, Mel said, how did you know? How do you know what I saw or something like that? And Stormy said, because you see everything else. Mel said, not everything. I said, she see your ass getting sued, though. <laughs> we all do, Stormy. And if you and the rest of the cast wasn't stalking her, because I know your ass over here listen too. If you and the rest of the cast wasn't stalking her, you wouldn't know what she'd be doing. But because y'all stalk her, in my opinion, y'all see everything that she say and do. And then try to do the exact same thing, only to fail at it. Mel make a video, Stormy want to make a video. Mel shows that she's packing orders, Stormy put out something showing she's packing orders. <coughs> that probably ain't going to get to them folks who ordered it. She's going to lie and say the post office stole it. Mel in the lab with a white coat on with her chemist, Stormy in the lab with her uh, white coat with her white labels, white labelers or whatever, okay? They watch everything that Mel do and always got something to say about what Mel do. That's why she getting sued because she's more focused on Mel's business, you know, than she has her own. It's like, you see, she said, you see everything else, Mel. And I'm like, how do you know that? Oh, okay. So Stormy going to tell Mel it was okay. I said, if it's okay, then why are you and your dumb ass mama on stage arguing with her about it? Opt out of talking about it if it's okay. Mel told Betty, like, hey, bitch, because Betty going to ask Mel, so you didn't go back and look at any of the comments under your tweet? Mel said, look, you got enough going on with your family to be worrying about me. So Betty going to tell Mel to mind her business when that was what she needed to be doing because that didn't have shit to do with her. The nerve of her to tell Mel to mind her business. Mel said, that's what I'm telling your ass to stay out of this over here. Like, girl, you want to go and you want to insert yourself in something, go and insert yourself in a psychiatrist's office because you need it. Mel said, I ain't had a problem with you. You too old for me to have a problem with you. You old enough to be my mother. And I said, and she looked old enough to be your great, great grandmother. OK. Mel said, I'm not here for you at all. So mind your damn business. I'm trying to be respectful. OK, dog face. But that shit ain't going to last long if you keep running your mouth. So Betty going to say. You still arguing with Martel over a divorce that happened three years ago. Now nah, your business. I said, bitch, you still arguing over a tweet that happened three years ago that had absolutely nothing to do with your ass. So you mind your business. And you can tell that she had been waiting to say that shit to me. You know what I'm saying? And she ain't shit but a lying ass bitch. Because when do Mel be arguing with Martel over their divorce? Never. Mel divorced his ass and went on about her business. That be his ass arguing over the divorce because his ass want her to undo it. Either way, it's like, bitch, that ain't your business. Worry about your daughter being on the verge of losing her fucking home because she feel like, you know, she ain't got to pay folks back their money. Worry about your daughter getting sued every other fucking day. Stop hating a woman that ain't never did nothing to you or, okay, your daughter. She ain't never did nothing to y'all but be great. Something y'all asses ain't capable of being. She came onto that stage ready to attack Mel, okay? But not Tisha for telling her daughter to go and pop some pills. Of course she wasn't going to come at Tisha about that because her and Tater had both know, probably know that the shit is true in my opinion. Now what Tisha said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that sounds far worse than what Mel said. Mel just said that that's why she don't have folks in her home and that's why she have a check for recording devices, okay? Tisha told her ass to go and pop some pills. 
So when Betty said what she said about her arguing with Martel, Mel asked her to repeat it. Pretty much, she was daring Betty to repeat it because she had something for her ass, in my opinion. But Betty didn't repeat it. Instead, she screamed to the top of her lungs like the demon that she is, saying that she didn't know what she had just said and thought that the shit was funny. Okay? This is why people be going in on Stormy and her mama because they both are fucking clowns. Stormy was pretending like she was trying to stop her mama from going at Mel, but she know damn well she was enjoying it. Mel just shook her head in disgust. And call her ugly ass the demon that she is. Y'all, I can't take Teddy Head or her mama. I just can't. So, y'all, that was it for part two of the reunion. So, that's going to be all for this video, okay? For those of you who enjoy my content, consider, you know, joining my channel membership. The link to join is right up underneath this video. And you can also join by clicking the um, join button right here on my channel, okay? Membership is only $6.99 a month, and you can cancel at any time. Joining my membership will grant you access to exclusive content that is not available over here, okay? Also, if you're not following me, um, please consider doing so over on uh, Twitter, which is now called X. Um, follow me on Instagram as well, and also on TikTok at Miss Ms underscore true t okay for those who wish to donate to my channel my cash app is the dollar sign true t 911 okay all of that information is right underneath this video along with my paypal information okay um make sure y'all tune in tomorrow because i will be uploading commentary regarding destiny's interview with um dear future wifey's podcast okay y'all take care and i'll chat with y'all in the next one